Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a bunch of random skyscrapers that look like this. Now this tutorial assumes that you've gone through my other tutorial about how to build a custom blueprint to copy points. If you haven't done that, then you will need to go back and complete it in order to follow along with this tutorial, because I make use of it extensively. Alright, let's dig into the tutorial. Okay, I'm here in a new project, and I have imported the copy points custom blueprint into it. And we're just going to start off by creating a blueprint to hold everything, bp underscore buildings, let's call it, and a PCG graph. PCG, also buildings. And in the blueprint, I'm just going to add a spline and a PCG graph. I'm not going to worry about all those variables that I did in the last video where I went over the copy points loop. I'm just going to set everything manually by hand for now, and maybe next video I'll worry about converting it over to be more flexible and dynamic. Okay, let me modify the spline so that it is a little bigger to start, just to make things more convenient. And I'll make it a closed loop. Compile, save. And now I've got to set the graph to PCG also buildings. Compile, save, and there we go. Now I'm done with the blueprint. Drag it into the world and get nothing because I haven't done anything with the PCG graph yet. The PCG graph is going to be fairly straightforward. I'm going to have a get spline data and a spline sampler. Spline sampler I'll change off to distance on interior. And now I'm not actually going to do anything with it. I'm just setting it up for later. Because I'm going to be working with potentially millions of static meshes, I want to start off a little small. So instead of starting off with the spline, I'm going to start off with a get actor data. And so what this is going to do is it's going to basically give me just a single point, because I'm setting the mode to get single point, a single point from the middle of where the blueprint is, instead of however many points this spline sampler is going to give me. So the spline sampler, each point is a building. The actor data, each point is a building, but there's only one point. So for building and development purposes, this is going to be <laughs> the way to go. All right, I'll drop that into a projection node, and I'll project landscape height. And I'll just uncheck project rotations, because landscape height isn't feeding rotations, so there's no reason to set rotations to nothing. OK, next I'm going to create the size of the building with a bounds modifier. Now this I'm going to change to set, and then I want the bounds min and max to define the size of a single building. And a single building is going to be, you can think of it essentially in tiles, where each static mesh you have is a title. And the static meshes I'm using are 400 by 400. So each tile is going to be 400 by 400. So the bounds need to be some multiple of 400. And let's just make it 10 by 10 to start, which means I want it to be negative 5 to positive 5 times the tile size, so 400, so 2,000, and negative 2,000. And I'll do the same for the y. And for the z, I actually do want this, because some of these points, when we're on the spline, might go up a hill. And so if you have one long point and another long point underneath it, they could potentially not overlap and create a couple of buildings through each other unless you set the z-axis to something large enough that they are going to collide. I'm also going to check effect steepness. And if you set steepness to 1, that means it's a sharp edge on the bounds, which allows me to more easily pack buildings in as I want them so that they can butt right up next to each other. All right, so I'll just toss that into a self-pruning node. 
since there's only one point right now, self-pruning doesn't do anything, but that's, that's all right. And then this needs to go into density noise, because density noise is what gives me the random value in density that I'm going to be using to figure out the building height. So it's 1 before the density noise, and it is, in this case, 0.576 afterwards. And now I want to use my uh, PCG blueprint. So I'm going to just drag in this BPCG copy points loop. And I will slow double click on the title and call it copy point to corners. Copy point to corners. I'll hook that up. And so what this one is going to do is it's going to take the point and say start here, go up, then go right, and then go down. And at the end of it, I have four corners. So what I'm going to do is set the rotation to negative 90 every time. And the offset needs to be the size of the bounds that I'm using. So in this case, it's going to be uh, 2,000 and 2,000, so 4,000. So let's just set the offset to 4,000. And the scale I need to set to 1, 1, 1. Or I can actually go into the PCG blueprint and set the default scale value to 1, 1, 1, because I never want it to be 0. So uh, that's a change you might want to make from the last tutorial where I built this thing. OK, so the height range is 0, because I don't want any randomness to this. I want exactly four corners. Min height, I'll set to 4. Now if I change this to absolute, change the point scale to 5 so it's visible, and change it to an axis tripod, this is going to give me a good idea of what everything looks like. Turn on debug, and there we go. Four points, four corners. And you can see that each corner is facing inwards. So the x-axis goes this way, then this way, then this way, then this way. So that is exactly what I want to see. Next, I'm going to take this point and copy it multiple times all the way over until it reaches this point to create the walls. And I'll do the same thing for this point, this point, and this point. So the walls are just going to extend out from these points. So let me do that with another copy points node. And this one I'm just going to do copy corners to walls. So the offset for this will be 400. And the height that I'm going to set is 4,000 divided by 400, which is 10. For now, let me just uh, give a quick demo. I don't want any rotation on this. And let me hook this up. And I will debug this one. So as you can see now, it's copied out five times. So if I keep extending this, it'll copy all the way to the end. There we go. So at this point, I can actually spawn a static mesh. And I'll add the mesh entry for it. And I'm going to make it a wall. Wall 400 by 300. Let's do a wall with doors so that you can actually see what's going on. And there we go. We've got four walls. They have a, well, you can't see it with the debug on. Oh, yeah, you can. They have nice corners, and it's looking great. If you haven't, and you are using the starter content, make sure you enable Nanite on all this stuff, because you are going to want Nanite when you start spawning millions of meshes. All right, so now I can take all of these points and copy them upwards just as a whole. But I'm actually going to go back in the graph and do it earlier so that I have a stack of points, and then I spawn these around. That is because I want to have greater flexibility in how each floor is generated. So if I generate the floor points first, then I could pick a random floor that you know I generate elsewhere in a different piece G graph, and generate that floor, then the next floor I pick a different one, generate that floor layout, and so on. And it's just a little better flexibility, I find. So for this, I'm going to go right after the density noise before I even do the corners. And we're going to drag this out, copy points buildings. I'm going to call this one 
copy points up. And this, the offset will be 300 on the z-axis. No rotation, scale 1, height range, I can set, uh, let's say, 20 and the min height to 10 because I want these to be of varying heights, varying amounts of stories. And let's change the scale method to absolute axis tripod and 5 so that it's visible. And now if I debug this one, there we go. They're copying up. And if I check copy points to corners, we've got four corners. I mean, I don't really need to debug because I've got the static meshes here, but still. And then uh, we've got all the walls. Let me fix up one thing now. So if I debug this bounds modifier, this is going to be what makes sure the buildings don't overlap each other. And as you can see, it is offset from where the building actually is. The building itself should lay perfectly on this bounds. Otherwise, if we do self-pruning and then rotate these buildings, this building will rotate around the outside as opposed to rotating perfectly with the bounds, which then means it could overlap with another building that's rotating the same way around the outside. So to fix that, I have to add a transform points node that offsets these points backwards to fit into this bounds. I'm going to do it right after this copy points node, and there is a good reason for this, because if I add some rotation to this, as you can see now, it is getting offset around this axis. But if I add the offset right here, it serves a double purpose. Both of lining it up with the bounds, but also lining it up with itself, so that this rotation uh, happens smoothly. So now, with it set up this way, you can make a strangely twisting building if you want, which for a square building doesn't make much sense, but maybe for a circular building it would make sense. All right, so next up, I want to create the floors. And I've found that I can go from this node, after we've copied the points up, because there's still going to be one floor per story. So let me do that. Copy points. So let me check where this is. And, you know, for this, let me go ahead and remove this rotation. Change this to 5. There we go. Okay, so we've got all the points right here. So what I'm going to do is, first, I want a row across, so I'm going to copy this point 10 times, and then I'm going to copy the entire row 10 times in the other direction. And so first I'll create a line, and then I'll kind of wipe that line across to create an entire fill of all of these points. So that will use two of these copy points nodes. One, no, not copy points, copy points to corners. I really should have picked a better name for this node. And I'll drop this one here. So I don't want any offset. I don't want any rotation. Min height is going to be 10. And I do want an offset, actually. I want 400 for the offset. So if I debug this one, we've got our single wall, basically, of points. And now if I change this one to be 400 on the y-axis and 0 on everything else, and 10 min height as well, and debug this one. We've got 
a grid of floors. It's kind of hard to tell with it like this, but uh, yeah, a grid of floors. Also, it creates a kind of cool looking mesh. So now I can uh, do a static mesh spawner. And for this, I will update it to be a floor. Uh, before I do that, if you have a lower middling end computer, you may want to change the collision presets to no collision because this can get fairly intense and when you aren't sure how your computer will handle it, it's better to start with something light. All right, so now let's find a floor tile. Floor 400 by 400. Save and we've got floors. Let me debug this. So the problem here is we have floors but we don't have a ceiling, and that is because there's actually a floor tile at the base and one floor tile at the base of every single one of these static meshes, but that means we need one more floor at the ceiling. So to handle that, I could try to figure out exactly how high this is. It's not too hard. My calculation is pretty straightforward. I'm just converting density over to a height. But instead of doing that, I could also just lift all of these floor tiles up by 300 and then add one at the base. And I already know what the base point is because everything is starting from the base point. So to do that, I can go back to this density noise node, transform points. And if I debug this one, change it to absolute, five and an axis. So if I debug this one, I should see a point. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but right here. Unlit. There we go. Now we can see the point. So right here in the center, and that is a handy reference for a floor tile. But uh, these points are spawning from this transform point, which is the corner. So I need to offset that center point over to here, which means I'll just drop it right in this transform point, the same negative 2000. And I need to do this separately because uh, this upper transform points I'm also using for the walls, so I can't actually plug in this node into this transform points node because otherwise I'd create an extra point for the walls when I only need this extra point for the ceilings. So now I need to actually add one more transform points between this one and the copy points, and that is to add 300 height to just move all of these floors up one story. So let's do that. And now if I go back into this thing, I haven't added the base floor in yet, but if you look here, there's no floor on the base. So that's perfect. I just have to spawn this floor right here. And we have a ceiling and floors. So if I hook this right up here, that should be everything. Let's check. Great. That's looking good. Uh, there is one thing I'd like to fix, though. The mesh and the ground are basically at the same level, and the mesh and the ceiling are at the same level. So they create this kind of. Uh, bad clipping effects. So for that, I just have to add a little bit of height to the... Well, either have to add a little bit of height or take away a little bit of height from the ceiling tiles. And I'm just going to add a little height. So for that, I will plug all of these into a single transform points node so I can do it in one place. Should I decide to change it later, I will add five height, save, and if you look at it now, they're a little bit up, there's no weird clipping, and everything's looking good. Let me change this back to lit. There we go. So one thing I like to do for these buildings, just to add a little extra flavor to them, is add some columns on the side here to kind of overlap this connection point between the walls and hide it. So for those pillars, I can go into this, and what I want is four corners, and right here we already have four corners. So let me drag this out here and add in a transform points node so I can take a look at what we got. Uh, 
I put that in the wrong place. Let's put it right here. And there we go. Okay, four corners. So if I drop in the static mesh spawner, I can add the pillars right here as the static mesh. Pillar 50 by 500. And you can see here that the pillar goes too high. That's because the pillar is 500 high and the walls are 300 high. So I can just use this transform points and I'll set the scale down. And I only want to affect the Z scale. I don't want to affect the X and Y. So make sure that these locks are not checked and then uncheck uniform scale. Uniform scale means it only grabs the scale from the X parameter and I want to actually have the Z parameter be a separate scale. So the size is just going to be 300 divided by 500. So 0.6. And if I save and take a look, there we go. Let's turn off this debug. And there, we've got some nice corners for these things. OK, let me go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, this spline. Let's make it a little bigger so multiple buildings can fit in. Now before I convert it over to using the spline, I'm going to actually figure out what the size of these buildings are. So in the bounce modifier, the buildings are 4,000 in width. So one trick I've found for the spline sampler, and this is only for square <laughs> square city blocks, but I can set the interior sample spacing to 4,000 plus a little buffer, let's say 1,000, so 5,000. And now if I hook this up, you can see that the points spawn every 5,000, and since the buildings are 4,000, it creates these nice uniform streets, and it's starting to look like a city. I'm going to do one more thing, and I've found that it helps a little bit when I start to work with uh, really large numbers. I'm going to treat the spline as a polyline. So instead of, uh, I think what this does normally is every 100 units, it samples the point to try to figure out exactly what the bounds are, and you can change that here from 100. Or you can check treat spline as polyline. And what this seems to do is basically draws a line between each point, and that's what it uses for the bounds. So instead of being curved, it's actually a linear. And I could just change the points to be linear as well, and that would do the same thing. So this works with, uh, without having to edit each individual point. And this makes sense for city blocks. It doesn't make much sense for, you know, forests or nature or something like that. But here it works rather well. Let me now do one last update here. I'm just going to duplicate up this mesh here and add a little randomness just to show you that the walls are random and working correctly. This one will be wall window and back to the map. So they are not random. They are random on a per building basis right now. So to fix this, what I need to do is add in a transform points node right here. Drag this out into here. You can see it's uh, starting to get rather large. And this transform points, I'm going to check recompute seed. So drag that, connect that, connect that, and there we go. We've got our randomness. All right, I hope this helps. I hope you learned something, and I will talk to you next tutorial.